Hello Nuggets. I wanted to do a quick blog um, about game development. So I, I've been in the games industry for a long time. You can see some of the posters behind me. Um, made a lot of games, right? So I worked on Call of Duty. I've worked on Medal of Honor. Very bad game I worked on. I worked on uh, James Bond game, which is also not a good game. Um, uh, I've worked at Naughty Dog, so I worked on uh, The Last of Us and Uncharted 4. Um, and I've worked on independent games and stuff like that. So I've been doing it a long time, almost 15 years, I think. I don't know, I've been doing it a long time. Um, so I have some experience in it and I continue to do it. I have some friends I've met in the industry who've stayed lifelong friends and we occasionally work on stuff together. Um, one's a coder, one's a, a designer like me. Um, but I've been a writer and designer in video games for a long time and I've used a ton of different engines. I think I've used almost every one I can think of that's out there and quite a few proprietary engines for the companies I've worked with. Uh, so I think I have a good handle on which engines to use and how to make the choice about what you want to do. Because whenever I tell people I'm a game developer, and particularly when I tell them I worked on some of the games I worked, because I've worked on some big games, uh, they always have an idea. There was like, this is a great idea for a game. And it falls into one of two categories. Either they want me to do it, which is my answer is always no, right? Because your idea is not as good as you think. It's like the, guy walk, it's like the waiter walking up saying, I've got a great movie script. Um, you need to go through the right channels. If you have a great idea for a game, don't ask someone else to do it. Go learn how to program yourself. Go learn how to make a game. The second one is that you already want to do that. You want to make it yourself, but you don't know where to start. So this blog is about where you start. Okay, so you have a game day idea. Here's the decisions you need to make that will choose how you take your next step. First one is, is it 3D or 2D? Okay, so if it's 3D, there are a multitude of engines you can use. You can use uh, Unreal, Unity, uh, CryEngine. Is Frostbite, I don't know if Frostbite's public. We used it at EA, um, we moved over to it. Um, I don't know whether there's a public version of it or not, but if it's out there, then that's an option as well. Um, and if it's 2D, there's so many things. There's this one called Fusion, Click Team Fusion, and Unity does 2D very well. Unreal does it very poorly. Um, so there's lots of 2D options as well. Um, and Game Maker Studio. My recommendations are, if you're gonna do 3D, use Unreal. And if you're gonna use 2D, use Game Maker Studio. Game Maker Studio is, might be a little bit surprising because Unity is better. But Unity, there's a learning curve there and there's a decision you need to make a little bit later that will affect this as well. Game Maker Studio, you can just jump into that game and make a game like Undertale very quickly. If you have the game systems down, if you have the, the game design doc in your head, whether you've written it down or not, like you know what's gonna happen at each stage of the game and you feel confident that you've got all of that ready, I think you can put that into Game Maker Studio very much quicker than you can Unity. I'm talking about someone who knows nothing about either engine. If you already know Unity, then Unity's gonna be faster, or well, as fast. But if you don't know anything and you're like, which one shall I download? Game Maker Studio will let you get in and start iterating very quickly. You can watch one set of tutorials and by the end of those tutorials, you can make your game. That's not true with Unity. With Unity, because it's such a, a complete and thorough engine, you will constantly be Googling, how do I do this? You don't really need to do that in Game Maker Studio. Once you know the basics, you're still Googling like, can, what's the script for this? What's the language for this? How do I set up this system? But in general, you don't need it. You can put it together quickly. So if you're doing 2D, I would recommend Game Maker Studio 2. Uh, the free version uh, is fully functional but with limited objects and you do hit that limit really quickly. Like You won't be able to make a game with the free version. But you will be able to see whether you like the engine and make maybe, you can make a game but a really light one, not enough that you could release. Um, so I would download the uh, trial version or the demo version and if you like it go spend, I think it's 100 bucks, 99 bucks and buy it. Um, I don't know how long that engine will last. You never know in this industry how long it will last. The, the two that we can be 99% sure are gonna last a long time are Unreal and Unity. Um, and I don't know how long Game Maker Studio 2 will last, but if it collapsed tomorrow, Game Maker Studio, you could still make the game. It's a good engine, it's, it's, it's very thorough. 
Um, there are some issues which we'll talk about later. If you're going to make 3D, I would use Unreal, not Unity. And here's why. I think you can prototype an Unreal faster than any other engine. Um, whether you have limited knowledge or extensive knowledge. Now, I've seen, I've worked with a lot of Unity developers who are really quick. They're not as quick as me in Unreal, and I'm not technical. It's just so easy. Unreal has this blueprint system, this drag and drop system, which you can get in Unity, but it's a third party asset. You have to download it, it's a package, and install it, and it's not as good. It's not as comprehensive. Everything you can do in Unreal, you can do in Blueprint, almost everything. Like very, very deep technical stuff requires code, but you can do it in Blueprint. It's better when it's in code in Unreal, right? It's more efficient, it's quicker, the whole system runs faster. And if you are genuinely wanting to release a game, you will probably want an engineer to pick and choose your systems and say, here's the Blueprint prototype, turn that into a piece of code. But you don't have to. You could make the entire game in Blueprint. You know, it's... Um, it's and very quick to learn, and the 3D setup for it is just so simple. They have a th they have starter content. You can literally start a new program, press play, and you're running around in the world, shooting a gun, you know. And then you can just build on that. You can say, well, let's put in a new gun model. Um, let's change the sound of the gunshot. Let's change, obviously, the the look of the world that we're in. Okay, let's add a stamina system. Let's add a jump and a crouch, and all of that stuff is very straightforward. The building blocks that you start with in Unreal are very easy to learn. Um, so I highly recommend it. Unreal does 2D and it's awful. Just don't even think, I think it's called Paper Papercraft or Paper 2D, whatever it is, they don't, I don't even know why they bother continuing to support it. I wish they did 2D, really, because I would use it because I love the Unreal system. I love the Blueprint system, but their 2D is not good. Unity, on the other hand, has excellent 2D and excellent 3D. It's just a bit more cumbersome, Unity. It's not, it doesn't feel quite as polished. Um, just, it's less enjoyable for me to use. Some people like the freedom of it. It's, it's, it's like Linux. <laughs> it's like, it's more open. It feels like it's more open source. Uh, or it's like Blender versus Maya, not the new Blender, the old Blender versus Maya, where it's, it's at times a little irritating and weird and odd, but it's beautiful because it's independent, you know, and fiery. Unity has that going for it. And, you know, it, you, if you can script in Unity, you're learning very good habits for the industry because it's C-sharp. And I think there's other ones. There's Monoscript and, I don't know, it has another language as well. But, but in general, the processes you use in Unity are industry standard for the most part. So it's very handy. Whereas in Unreal, you can use industry standard and you should be if the project's big. But the pick up and play, pick up and dev, as it were, is Blueprint, which is not industry standard. Um, that's a designer's tool and an artist's tool. You know, it's there for the art. That's what Unreal does better than anything is the art. And it does all the other stuff too, but still my recommendation would be when you make the choice, if it's 3D, I would go Unreal. If it's 2D, I would go Game Maker Studio 2 or Unity if you are technically sound. If you're younger and you had to take computer uh languages or computer studies at school, you're probably more comfortable with scripting and coding, you should think about Unity. Because Unity is better than Game Maker Studio 2. It's just harder to learn, that's all. Okay, the next thing you have to decide is whether or not you want drag and drop or scripting. So you have to decide technically what you want to focus on, right? If you want drag and drop, like if you just want to drop something into the world and do very simple um, logical uh, statements, then that you want drag or drop you want blueprint or you want gml has a drag or drop which is pretty good as well um unity doesn't um you can again you can download it from a third party but it's nowhere near as good and you're kind of not using unity the way it was designed to be used if you're more technical and you want a script then i would use unity as your central package and if you have multiple games in you and some of them are 2d and some of them are 3d and whatever i would recommend unity so if you're technical and you have multiple games, Unity. Um, it's a little frustrating if you're not technical. I've tried many times to understand um, Unity, and I can, I can work in it. It's just, it's cumbersome, and, it, and I forget it. Like, if I don't use it for a couple of months, I feel like I'm back to square one. Unreal, I forget everything, and then within half a day, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember all this. 
and it just comes straight back because they use a drag and drop system, right? It's it's not quite drag and drop. That's a bad word for it, but it's blueprint. So it's a little visual scripting. You just bring in a node and you add things to the node and then you connect it to another node and you can see the logic of how your game is playing out like this. Um, game Maker Studio 2 also does a very similar thing. All of these engines you can script in as well, obviously. Um, so you have to decide there. Is it 2D, 3D? Is it drag and drop and scripting? If it's scripting, Unity. If it's drag and drop, I would still use Unreal or Game Maker Studio 2. Okay, next choice, big or small. So this is where Game Maker Studio falls down. If you have a big project, Game Maker Studio 2 is not a good choice. It's just not structured very well to have massive projects. If you have a very limited scope, uh, it's great. And I would say you could, you could, Stardew Valley, you could make in Game Maker Studio 2, but you're pushing the limits of what it can do there. That's a lot in that game. Doesn't feel like a massive amount, but it is. That's, there's a lot going on there. Um, Undertale, I think you could comfortably make in Game Maker Studio 2, and that's about the limit, but not the uncomfortable limit. You're like, yeah, I can make Undertale. I can do that. Um, and actually, both of those games look like they could totally have been made in Game Maker Studio 2. Um, but if you're thinking of a big, bigger project, you need to be going with Unity or Unreal. Um, they're just structured better for that. They scale really well. They scale to dev teams really well. So if you have multiple people working on a project, both Unity and Unreal work well with source control. So multiple file checkouts and stuff like that. If you want to work on a file and someone else wants to work on a file, how do you negotiate which is the correct file, which is up to date? Game Maker Studio does have source control, but it's not as good. And it's a little janky, a little broken. Maybe not broken is the right word, but it's not as good. It's not as integrated as fully. Because uh, it's designed for the single developer. Whereas Unreal has fantastic source control in integration. In fact, perfect, I would say. Even compared to when I've worked in, in companies, working on your, when I work with my friends online, it's perfect. You know, Unity One is really good, but it's a little bit different you have to do exclusive checkouts and stuff like that it works but you need system in place it's not quite plug and play with unreal source control i feel is plug and play it's very simple if someone's got the file checked out you can't work on it that's all um okay so big or small if it's big i would use unreal or unity if it's small you can keep with uh game maker studio 2 um that's it okay next one pc or mobile so if you're doing mobile um, I would use Unity. I think Unity's mobile tools for iOS and Android and stuff like that are really good. It's so easy to push it through. It's really well designed. I'm pretty sure it was built for it. Um, but it's really good in that aspect. But again, it's hard to learn. I keep coming back to that. Unity is hard to pick up and learn. It's daunting. Anyway, um, Game Maker Studio 2 can push to those other things, but I think you have to buy them. You have to buy the packages that allow you to push to mobile. And I don't think it's worth it because you can't do the kind of, it's not for that. You should make little PC games, games that you put up on the web or games that you want to sell on Steam and stuff like that. You could do that in Game Maker Studio too. You know, it, It's an amateur dev tool. It really is. But it's really fun to make a game in it. So, you know, it's good enough for that. And if you want to push it to mobile, maybe you should be thinking... Well, now you're thinking of selling the game, right? So you should be thinking bigger than that. And I think you should think of Unity. I would not use Unreal for mobile. It's just, it's a mess. It's, it's way too cumbersome. It's huge. The packages that Unreal makes are really big. And you never know if your game's going to run on mobile um, just because whether or not it's too big for mobile. It's just not designed for that at all. It's designed for PC and consoles. So if you're making mobile, that leads you to Unity as well. So those are your four choices I think you need to make. Are you making a 2D or a 3D? Are you making a drag and drop or scripting? So in other words, how technical are you? Uh, is it a big game or is it a small game? By the way, if you're thinking of making a big game to, try, to start out, you're doing the wrong thing. <laughs> you are. I know your eyes are bigger than your stomach and you're like, I want to make an open world survival game like uh, The Forest or uh, Rust. Um, no, you shouldn't be doing that. You just shouldn't because there's no way you're going to be able to make that. And you're just setting yourself up for success. And you might be a fantastic developer with a wonderful idea. And you could be and you could be a and and next genius, right? All of it being ruined by the fact that you didn't contain yourself and say, make a small game. So that's where you should be starting. 
make a small game make a small game i cannot reiterate that enough just start with something small firstly it will teach you the engine you just want to learn the engine see if you like the engine so you can make more informed choices secondly you'll finish it and um, if you don't finish stuff you don't move on to the next thing you don't improve right so uh, hopefully you're making a small decision but if you're wondering if you've made a couple and you have a few people involved and you're big or small then you have to decide which one of those you're going to do if you're going big don't use game maker studio 2 highly recommend against it it's going to be annoying for you and then you have to decide if you're pc or mobile and i think mobile the only real choice there is unity i can't think of a better choice out there i'm sure i'm missing engines um there are some other engines you can consider trying like cry engine my issue with CryEngine is I don't know how long it's going to last. They go through, they've been through quite a few financial difficulties in the last few years, and the team even split. There are now two different engines. I don't know how long it will be supported, and there are bugs in that engine. It's fantastic. You can do really amazing things. Beautiful looking. It's fairly simple to learn, but, you know, a couple of years from now, it may not be around. And if you want support, if you find a bug in CryEngine, I think you're going to be pulling your hair out a little bit. You're like, well, that's just there. We've got to work around it. That's not so much true with the other engines. But CryEngine's good. Just forewarning. May not last forever. Um, what other engines are there? I was just thinking of one in my head. So there's Unreal, Unity, CryEngine. Oh, Source. So if you can get it running... <laughs> The Source Engine's fantastic. I love the Source Engine. Half-Life, Half by the way, if you don't know. It's awesome. It's really great. And Team Fortress 2 and, and all of those kind of games. It's fantastic. But it's not supported anymore, I don't think, unless they're doing something. You know, Valve, they might be doing something in the background we don't know about. When it works, it's amazing. And it was a very, very functional engine. So you could go back and say i like the look of this and i like the system i'm going to use this and you won't find many bugs there aren't going to be some points where your development is stopped because something doesn't work because in general it's great they release multiple games with it it's easy to use world building's fun the text display it's a bit dated if you want a state-of-the-art game then that's probably not it but you shouldn't be making a state-of-the-art game that takes a team with two to three hundred people you should be making your idea you should be making creating a piece of art in which case you can use Source. I really liked it. I thought it was a really good engine. The, the, the shaders are so much easier in it because it's just textures and, you know, normal maps and stuff like that. It's not quite as complex. Unreal materials, although not hard, it's more complex than just plastering a texture on a wall, which is what you do in Source. Um, at its most basic, what you do in Source. Um, so what other engines are? There's like Click Fusion and there's all of these little other little engines. I wouldn't really recommend any of them. Um, what I would say is you might want to consider signing up for Humble Bundle. Um, firstly, you should support, support them anyway. It's a, just they're fantastic, right? You get a lot of stuff very cheap, um, and they're very supportive of the developers. I believe that's that's their marketing splurge. It might be nonsense, um, but there's often really handy tools you get in there. So they'll have like Sprite Maker and Sprite -a Pro and Sprite Illuminator and all this stuff. So if you're making 2D games, which I would recommend just because in general they're more manageable. If you're on Humble Bundle, you'll suddenly get, oh my God, I've got all these tools. I can spend $20 or pay them $5 or $100, depending on how much money you have, hopefully $100. But if you only have five, give them $5 and you get all these awesome tools that you will use. They're really, really handy. I have a ton of them on my desktop. So Humble Bundle is one of the few spam emails that goes into my inbox because <laughs> you never know. They might have something amazing and they sell games really cheap too. Um, so I would highly recommend signing up for Humble Bundle. At least get their newsletter so you know what's going on and you'll get some really good tools as well. All right, I think that's it. Sorry if it was a bit rambling, but um, I wanted to do one. If this shows some interest, if you have some questions, maybe I'll do another blog. If not, this is the last you'll ever hear about games. All right, Nuggets. Bye. Addendum. <laughs> so I just looked on my desktop to see what other engines I have. God, I have a lot. I didn't mention Godot or Godot. I don't know how you pronounce it. G-O-D-O-T. Um, it's really good. Godot is very, very good. Um, it's probably Godot. I'm thinking of waiting Godot for Godot. And I don't think the engine was written by Samuel Beckett. Maybe it was. Let's call it Godot because it's fun to say. It's really good. Um, it's a little proprietary, right? So... If you're learning Godot, there obviously are some things that will translate to other engines as well. But it's a little of an outlier. Um, 
I like their story, their history. It feels very independent. It feels very like they're wanting to change the way games are made. Made, And you never know, they might hit it. They might be onto something. They might be the next Unity. Because Unity started like that as well. They're like, we're just going to take this industry, which is run by Unreal this and, and Source at the time, and we're just going to do our own thing. And they succeeded and, you know, took over. Um, and Godot may be one of those. I don't know if it will. I think it's in Eastern Europe. I feel like they might be Croatian or Serbian, possibly. Um, the team that makes it maybe Russian. Eastern European, anyway, I think. Um, but uh, it's really good. It's a good engine. It's free. Um, I don't know. I haven't checked into it for a little bit um, because I found the interface a little clunky. They need a better UX designer they need a better interface designer um, but it's really good and there are some good tutorials coming out on there now so you can find good stuff about Godot um, and then let me see hang on a sec the other one oh yeah the other one I wanted to mention was Twine so it's not a game engine it's uh, an interactive narrative engine here's the thing if you make a Twine game you're going to be appealing to a very small group of people right you could put your game up on itch.io itch.io which you should check into it's really good for independent games however if you want to express your art and express what you have in yourself and you're not thinking of commercial success you're not thinking about how far will my game reach i would suggest looking at twine because you can learn twine very quickly and you can create something absolutely beautiful with it it's basically text you can do images you can do lots of cool stuff with it but it's, it's a very limited scope, what Twine can do, but it teaches you to write. So if you're a game writer, I get uh, quite a few emails from people, uh, usually because my wife puts them in touch with me. I've got to talk to her about that. But a lot of, quite a few people who um, are interested in becoming game writers. And I'm like, well, they want to know where they start. And I'm like, well, it's really hard because most games, the creative director thinks they can write. And often they can, you know. But... It's, it's already done. They're not looking to hire writers. And if they are, hopefully they're hiring me, not you. But you never know. But if you're a narrative, you're a, you want to practice that skill of game narrative, of interactive narrative, interactive fiction, you should look at Twine um, and learn it because you can pick it up pretty quickly. You can download it for free. You can start working on it right away. And there are a couple of good things in there. There's another one called Inky, um, which is very similar to Twine. Um, I think Inky is a little bit, uh, it, there are pl pros and cons to both, but Twine is out there and there's lots of resources for it. Um, so I, you should consider maybe looking at Twine if you're really into the narrative. If there's just a story you want to tell um, and you just want to do like basically like a text adventure, it is. there are images, as I said, you can use graphics as well, but not really. It's really a text adventure with images. It's more like, I don't know, Zorg, Zork. It's been a while since I did that those games. Um, but yeah, consider that and consider Godot. I just wanted to add that as an addendum at the end. All right, Nuggets, bye.